Okay, now that I got your attention with that video of me driving at Fermilab, uh, let's talk about what actually is happening. There's a, there's a physics phenomenon going on there. And uh, to help us understand that, I got uh, a little demonstration here. So this is a, a little wiffle ball with uh, a, a buzzer inside. And uh, I'm going to wing this thing around my head, and I want you to just listen to uh, what it sounds like. Listen for the changes in maybe uh, pitch or frequency or wavelength or amplitude or whatever those things mean. Listen for it, and then uh, we'll talk some more about it. We'll try that again. Now, I'm guessing that was a little tough to hear, so uh, I'm going to put it in slow motion. I think it'll be easier to hear there, and then and we'll get together and talk about what's happening. So, hopefully you heard that. Listen again. So one thing we haven't talked about yet in this uh, particular unit is what happens when sound moves, which is what you've just heard, right? You heard what happens when sound moves, but what's actually happening there? What's the physics behind what you hear? So whether it's uh, my car driving down the road with a horn blaring and you hear the or uh, you're, you've got in your neighborhood, uh, the ice cream truck comes up and you you hear the music change from a higher pitch to a lower pitch, or I've got this demonstration of the ball going around my head and you hear the high pitch to low pitch. It's always a high pitch to low pitch uh, when the thing is coming towards you or away from you. So what's happening there? What's the physics? Well, I'm going to kind of explain that here. And again, I want to remind you to take notes as you're listening to this. Um, it's your expectation that, or my expectation that you're writing down the things that you're learning. And of course, you should only write down the things that you are learning. If you already know it, you don't have to write it again. And if it doesn't make sense the first time, the beauty of a flipped lesson is you can go back and listen again and take the notes again. So I'm going to draw a picture of the ball or um, even the ice cream truck. Let's do that. So there's my ice cream truck. And let's assume for now that the mechanism for the sound doesn't work quite right. It's not playing the music, it's got its horn stuck in just one note. So it's a constant a constant pitch, whatever that pitch may be. And uh, I can't, you can't hear it obviously, it's a drawing. So I'm going to draw what the sound might look like if you could visualize it. So let's pretend that uh, the sound maker is right there and as the sound travels out from that sound maker, it may look something like this. You've got these sound waves coming out. And as we talked about earlier in our class, I'm going to picture each one of these lines as a crest of a sound wave. Or in reality, since it's a sound wave, it doesn't have crests and troughs. It has uh, compressions and rarefactions. So let's think of each of these lines as a compression. But if it's easier for you to visualize, think of it as a crest. That sometimes is easier for students to see. Well, if my uh, ice cream truck is sitting here, it's at rest, the sound waves go out and look something like that. Well now imagine if the sound or the, uh, the ice cream truck is going to be moving. So there's my ice cream truck, but now I'm going to move it to the right. And as it does that, it's going to keep beeping like it did before, but as, as the horn is stuck in one position, as the sound is stuck in one position, 
the vehicle is kind of catching up to its own sound waves. So that it might look something like this if you were to visualize the sound waves. Here's my sound source, but as it makes the sound, it keeps moving with it. Now the sound is winning that race. If the, if the ice cream truck and the sound are in a race, the sound is going to win. It's traveling really fast, 340 some meters per second. But nonetheless, the truck is kind of catching up to it. So the sound wave pattern might look something like this. So that in front, all the sound waves are kind of crowded together. Uh, and that's not the greatest picture. I'm going to have another animation for you to see. It's even better. Of course, it's better there. Uh, the picture will be better there to see what's happening. Now, if you had a person here, right? You've got a person in front of an ice cream truck. And you've got a person behind an ice cream truck. What are those two people here? Well, this guy hears sound waves that are kind of crowded together, right? The, the, the sound is, or the, the truck is catching up to its own sound waves. This guy back here hears sound waves that are kind of spread out. Well, what that sound, what's the difference there? Um, certainly as the truck is getting closer to the guy here, it gets louder. You heard that in the video of the car. You heard that in the video of the, the ball moving. But we're looking particularly at the frequency here, or the pitch. When the truck is traveling towards this man, these waves are all crowded together. And so the frequency of the waves hitting his eardrum is much higher than back here. This man hears a higher pitch. Or another way to think of that is uh, these waves are closer together, right? The compressions are closer together, and so he's going to hear a smaller wavelength. Which is what you would expect, right? We've talked about this before. A higher pitch gives you a smaller wavelength with the same speed of sound. Now, back here, what does this man hear? Well, these waves are spread out. So he's gonna, the crests don't come to him, or the compressions don't come to him as often, so he's going to hear a lower pitch. And he's going to have a, or hear a bigger uh, wavelength. Now, which waves are traveling faster? Do the waves in front travel faster or the waves behind? Well, hopefully at this point you've answered the question that the speed of the sound is exactly the same both in front and behind. Because we know that the speed of a sound wave, the speed of any wave, depends only on the medium that it's traveling through. So, the sound waves in front travel at 340 meters per second. The sound waves in back travel at 340 meters per second because the sound waves are traveling in the same medium. The medium is the only thing that determines the speed of the wave. So it makes sense, again, that if I have a big pitch or a big frequency, remember pitch is like frequency. If I have a high frequency, I'm going to have a low wavelength. And if I have a lower pitch or frequency, I'm going to have a bigger or a higher wavelength because we know the speed has to be the same both in front and behind. But let's not get caught up on the speed. Let's talk about that Doppler effect. This is called the Doppler effect because a, a guy named Johann Christian Doppler is the guy who figured this out. He didn't use ice cream trucks though. He used a band on a railroad car. And he noticed, just like you have noticed in your life and on the videos that I showed you, that when a moving sound is going towards the observer, you hear a higher pitch. And when a moving sound is moving away from an observer, you hear a lower pitch. That's called the Doppler effect. Now there's all sorts of math that goes with that, but we're not going to get in that, into that in our class. All you need to know is the concept behind it. I have a little activity for you to do to explore more of this with much better drawings and some more specific questions about what happens when the vehicle goes as fast as the speed of sound, or maybe even faster. What's the physics involved there? 
So check out the link, uh, do the activity, and we'll check in uh, next time with you.